Thank you. Well, my name is uh, Germán. I'm a researcher uh, from CONICET here in Buenos Aires, and I lead the uh, Computational Social Science uh, Social Sciences Lab in National University of San Martín. So, which uh, the research I'm going to talk about is based in that in factor data in this in this research lab. So, uh, the main idea, the main objective of this of this presentation is a first exercise uh, regarding what we could call the different forms or the different modes of agrarian expansion in Argentina. So the question should, would be uh, how is the agricultural uh, or agricultural frontier is expanding, it's moving for, forwards in, in Argentinian soil. Is it displacing other activities such as other crops, uh, li livestock breeding or something like that? Is it, dis is it displacing local uh, peoples? Uh, is it displacing forest? So is it talk we're talking about deforestation or processes like, like that. So uh, what I would like you to, to show you here is a first exercise in building a map with the highest possible resolution, uh, which allow us to identify th three types of situations in, in Argentinian territory. First, uh, uh, recent agricultural frontier expansion zones. This is zones which in T0, let's call it that, in a first period of time, were forest or shrublands or, or something like that. And at the end of the period, uh, they were transformed into agricultural use. And we will try to, to divide this in more recent uh, expansion and more consolidated uh, expansion. And uh, I'm not going to show you with details this because of the time, but we would like also to, to map recent urbanization or urban settlement zones. All right. So we will use this uh, data set from the ESA, which is the European Spatial Association which produces uh, this uh, pixel data set. I will talk to you with a little bit detail about that, uh, of land cover uh, classification. So they, they, I, I, I'm pretty sure you all know about a little bit about pixel data, but it's this idea that you divide, you, you kind of create a grid, square grid al along the, the surface of the Earth. And for different time periods, uh, each pixel is classified with one uh, land use class. Uh, these pixels are, you can see that they are, the spatial coverage, it's pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, there is, of course, there are some zones in Africa which we have no data and stuff, but from the case of Argentina, we have a little bit, little, a, a very good data set to, to work with. Uh, the, the, the time coverage is also, at least for the standards here, so it, it's pretty good. It's about 1992 to 2020. Uh, so we have almost 30 years of, of data about land use and land, land use coverage and land use change. And each pixel, it's about nine hectares, each one uh, approximately, the, the surface of, of each pixel. So w uh, the original data set had 22 classes of, of land coverage. We, we uh, Recoded into nine, uh, into nine more aggregated categories. So we have something like this because uh, we have for each pixel, and for those five periods of of time, we have a, a land class category, land class measurement. So w what we'd like to do is to analyze the trajectory. So, uh, this is to say, from the same pixel, how the land coverage has changed over over time. So. All right. There are a few methods to, to, to several methods to do that. One, a uh, lot of them involved aggregating this pixel into higher units. Perhaps we could take all pixels within class, I know, forest, and make a polygon about, and make the vector, a vector data set with, with, that, with that class, and the same for each, for each class. The problem with that is that each pixel could change over time, so we have no consist consistency between all the polygons in each, in each time frame. We also could aggregate this uh, pixel into higher units, perhaps a census tract or, or a county or provinces, and then we could calculate the frequency of each, traje of each trajectory type, and then perhaps keep us keep the, the 
more frequent one. But what we will try to do is to keep the original unit of the of the data set, which is th this pixel-based uh, data. So what we did is uh, we had about 2,500 different sequences in, in, in Argentina. So we had to, have to perform some kind of uh, complexity reduction because they were too much to, to classify each one at hand. So what we did was try to think of each uh, sequence, each, or each pixel sequence, as if it were, were as if it were, sorry, <laughs> a word. And then we applied what is called edit, di edit distances. I'm not going to enter in many details, but I, I'll, I'll try to give you some some intuition. If you think of this as a as a word and each class as a uh, as a uh, letter, sorry. We can count the number of operations that we have, perhaps, to transform this word of the sequence into this one, or into this one. Perhaps with words could be a little bit more clear. If I have casa and cama, which sorry, th this this works in Spanish, but <laughs> it would be like house and bed in English. I have to change one letter to transform this into this. But I have to do at least two operations to transform casa into coso, which would be house and thing, something like that. Uh, so these two words are more similar between each other than these two words. So if we can this kind of of this, we do this kind of uh, operation counts to transform one sequence into another. We have some kind of dissimilarity or distance, distance, distance measurement. So over we calculate that for the. To 2,500 type of sequences, and then over that we went uh, and do a well, good old-fashioned hierarchical clustering. That thing that always work, <laughs> uh, and we uh, find 20 groups. Okay, so oh, the color is killing me. Sorry. Uh, we have here the, the the more important in terms of of uh, pixel count trajectories. All the yellows are what we call agricultural stable. Uh, these pixels were all all over the period agricultural. The greens were all uh, forest stable, all the time forest or shrubland, in, depending on the color. Perhaps the more interesting stuff are the red ones, which are uh, this, this uh, uh, agrarian frontier expansion. These were pixels that were uh, forest or shrubland and were transformed into in some point of, 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 of the trajectory into agricultural use. And those uh, purple ones are the urban settlement recent and consolidated uh, urban settlement zones. Okay, this is pretty nice, but we have to do some kind of validation of this of this data. So the problem here is we don't have so many uh, information, so many data set in order to, to do some kind of quantitative validation of this of these results. So we did a little bit of, a little bit not, a lot of, sorry, <laughs> bibliographical research and tried to find some qualitative information about some, some, some local areas. This study uh, is from 2010. Uh, and it, uh, for that time period, it uh, detects, I insist, qualitatively, uh, for a uh, front of expansion of agricultural frontier, which pretty much coincide with the ones, with some of the ones that we, we, we have found. But since this data set, this data is more recent, it, end up, it ends in 2020, we can see that there are some more, some new uh, uh, agricultural expansion fronts in San Luis and in this area here uh, in the Mesopotamia. And then we do some localized validation. We went to some, we select some areas that we knew for field work or, or in seed for, for bibliological, bibliological, uh, bibliographical, sorry, uh, research that we kind of knew what kind of processes were happening there. So I, I will show you one of them. We, we did this with several areas. With that area over there, which is the limit between Santiago del Estero and Chaco in the northeastern uh, region of Argentina, which is called Monte Quemado. So you have a picture of Monte Quemado in 1982 that should be the, the, the start of our analysis period, and a satellite image of Monte Quemado in 2020. So 
you can see that there is a little, there is uh, some good matching there because all the red parts are parts that were forest in 1992 and were, but this, okay, this, this is not good, this is a forest fire, sorry. <laughs> but this one, they are all now agricultural uh, surface, agricultural pixels. And I'm not sure if you see, but this one over there, are what we call uh, puestos ganaderos, which are uh, small farm households which uh, breed livestock. So that's why they appear in yellow, because probably they deserve some pastures or some uh, forraje for, for feeding the, the, the livestock. All right. So I will be summing up right here. We have Effectively, we have some drawbacks in this in this approximation. The first one, there are much more, but the, the two I'd like to, to point to to point out for you is that we found some several classification error errors in the land cover data. Uh, these errors are first they are documented in the ESA that uh, documentation of, of the data, and then we did some kind of of validation with with some specific zones. And the, this classification tends to, to confound forest and shrubland. It's mainly based on the, dense, the vegetation density. They tend to confound this, this, this two, these two classes. Uh, and besides, we, ha we are not able to discriminate each, for each pixel that is classified as uh, agricultural use. We don't know what kind of crop are there. We know if it's soybean, if it's wheat, if it's cotton, if it's... Uh, uh, maize or, or, or whatever. So that would be interesting to, to, to try to, to discriminate that. But on the other hand, there are there are some advantages that would like that I would like to, to point out. The first one is this it's the ability to map at a high resolution uh, in the long run land use trajectories. Uh, basically for, for all Argentinian territory it could be rather easy to expand the, 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 the frame of analysis to Latin America or, or even more. And it is a relative, it, it has a relative low computational cost. I ran off the, all, the, all the process in this, in this computer over here. So it is not required a, a, a very high complex uh, infrastructure, cloud computing. Of course, it would be nice if one could use that. But in, uh, at this point, it, it's not necessary. But there are two, I think, uh, two advantages that, that I, I think they are the most important, uh, at least for, for my work, which is we do a lot of, of case studies and fieldwork in local areas. So using this information and another, another, and another that, we're, that we're constructing right now, that we're building right now, we could have like a frame, a, a general framing of these uh, case studies between a, a more general processes. And the idea is that this information should be useful or, or it could be used in order to select new cases, uh, not based only on what I think is happening in the, in the ground, but with some kind of information in that, in that sense. And just to, to summing up, we're working, we're trying to expand this, this, this work in, in mainly to two areas. The main one is, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I know this is getting recorded, so perhaps I'm kind of sure that we could use some more advanced uh, text mining techniques to, to, to improve these this, uh, clustering techniques. The thing that we're thinking is uh, something like word embeddings. This, I, I'm pretty sure that it could do a better work clustering these this land sequences than these distances. And we're exploring new data sources with higher spatial and temporal resolution. I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you know, but there is this amazing and crazy data set which is called Dynamic World, which it has like 10 to 10, 10 meters, um, a pixel of 100 square meters, which is crazy. And it has like, I, I don't believe it's daily or, or uh, weekly estimation of land cover. Uh, data, of course, you know Google. It's involved in that in that great experiment. So we're trying to uh, we're trying to explore this this new uh, this new information. Well, I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Uh,
thanks very much. Do I have questions? Yes, I see yes. one in the front. <coughs> yes, thank you for this very interesting talk. Uh, I want to ask you the size of the data set you handle and which tools did you use in your local computer to handle off all of this work? Well, I, I think there were like uh, approximately through 200, 200,000 pixels, approximately like that, uh, for Argentina excluding Patagonia. Um, and the, the, you mean, uh, the second question was, ah, the framework, the, the stack. The image processing we did with uh, some Python libraries, uh, Shidal and, and something like that. With, and the, the, the specifically the clustering sequences we did with uh, a, a R and a package called Traminer, uh, which is used, which is developed for uh, traject li life sequence trajectory, but okay, it was transferable, the, 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 the idea. Other questions? Yes. <coughs> Yeah. First of all, thank you for so such a good job. And it, two questions: uh, If you could connect this information to uh, distinguish uh, between uh, what uh, area where uh, legal expansions and illegal expansion connecting to the uh, planification of that area, and I, I think that that information also could be useful to. To, to reach uh, some maybe journalists to to let us people know about this. Yes, it is possible to, to in Argentina we have like what's called the, the semaforo, which are areas that are allowed to 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 deforest uh, to to, you know, to cut the forest. I'm not sure how to say it in English, uh, and some areas that they are completely forbidden. So that. Uh, should be rather possible to, to cross uh, that information because there is the, the vectorial information of, of those area protected. Laria over there, Laia over there has worked with other stuff like, like that. <laughs> what I wonder is if there is uh, some, maybe some government API to, for example, given a latitude and longitude, uh, what kind of le legislation uh, applied to that point and uh, cross it with this information? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it shouldn't be too, too be hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? Yes. Hi. <laughs> so I, I, I might not, perhaps you said it, but I didn't get it. But what's the, so if you want to, to divide uh, pixels between like thing, Places where it's stable agriculture and places where you, where you see deforestation. Mm -hmm. So why can't you just look at the first pixel, look at the, at the final pixel, and if you have forest first and then agricultural, uh, then you have a deforestation area and well the whole. Even why that? Why we didn't do that? Like like right? Yeah, look, from why why well, begin from end? Just to, to just took two points. Yeah, that, or, or perhaps like a linear regression or something like that. It's just. And, and instead, you did, did this uh, this whole thing with the words and <laughs> part because there is a, a, a thing that uh, when we analyze that 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 the 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 two th the 2500 trajectories that were that emerged from from the data, we have some not lot but some that in the middle they go back like they uh, forest then shrubland then agriculture then shrubland again. Uh, so we didn't know how to uh, how to work with that. So we said, okay, let's try to to develop a method that could uh, cluster all, all based on on this similarity. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that, that I, I think in, but I think that was the main the main the main issue. Okay. Yeah, and another one is is um, so with your methods, like. Uh, when you take each class as a, as a letter, basically, mm -hmm. but changing from one letter to, an, to another, it's always the same distance. But yeah, right. So, so if you change from forest to to urban area, it's as the same like distance. 
uh, as if you change from forest to shrubland, for yes, example, true. which is not really like no, it's I not what you want. So, so, so it's that what you perhaps will dissolve when, if you use embeddings. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was thinking. Especially, yeah, I don't know if if it's clear what he said, but but yeah, each change is it's the same. In a world, it has in a real world, it has sense. But perhaps when you pass from I don't know forest to shrubland to to uh, agriculture, you you could think that uh, that operation it's not it's not worth the same uh, from that. But but yes, that's why we're thinking on on, on perhaps trying something like water bathing or or something like that. Okay, thank you. Other questions? If anyone wants to ask a question in Spanish, that's also possible. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes. Y la voz español. Um, ¿Hay alguna, o hicieron o exploraron algún análisis como de predictibilidad de, bueno, dado de que alguien generó acá algo ganadero, entonces en los alrededores se generó esta consecuencia y por ende eso también puede explicar que si en un futuro alguien hace algo ahí va a generar este impacto alrededor? ¿Hicieron algún análisis así con estos dos datos? Sí, yes, ok. Um, have you made any kind of like a predictability analysis that you say, okay, given that in this place they put some farm, the surroundings were having this consequence, so if someone else in another place is going to do the same change, we can predict that the surroundings will have like a similar effect. Yeah, I can answer in Spanish and English. Uh, no, <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> Sí, la verdad es que eh, todavía no, insisto, este es como el primer el primer ejercicio. Eh, yo creo que en parte la, la, la cuestión es que se abren como una serie de, de posibilidades eh, eh, interesantes. O sea, no, estrictamente no hicimos ningún análisis espacial. Digamos, o sea, fue so, o sea, solo miramos las, las trayectorias y las clasterizamos sin incluir todavía información espacial, pero uno ya ve que igual aún así emergen, digamos, como... O sea, no sé, una vez un geógrafo me dijo, eh, el espacio está completamente eh, eh, overrated, o sea, space is overrated. So, uh, I mean, eh, but, but, eh, sí, o sea, es algo que efectivamente se podría hacer, pero uno ve que hay autocorrelación espacial, salta a la vista, digamos. I think that way. Yes. I think I ended too early, <laughs> because there was a lot of time for questions. Hola. ¿Sí? ¿Se escuchó? Maybe I missed in your presentation, but did you find the other way around, like places that were farming places that became or lost their 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 like became natural again or something like that? Yeah, we call that uh, retraction of of the of the agrarian frontier. There are, there are few, but there are some. They're not the main the main situation, but there are few 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 areas that 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 happened that and when we check the the photos and and. At least when, when you look at, at the satellite photos, it seems that that way. Te la pone español y después. Yes, because there are English speakers. Eh, <laughs> ¿Crees que esto puede llegar a reemplazar el censo agropecuario? Do you think that this is, could replace the agricultural census? No way. <laughs> no way, because these are. are, are uh, this only gives information about the, the land use. Uh, the agrarian censuses gives more information about the exploitations, about some economical characteristic of, of, of the, uh, people the people living in the farm, people working in the farm, the owners of the farm, etc., etc. So this is just a small part of that, of that information. Unfortunately, there's no other time for questions. Okay. So um, that's now time for a coffee break. But before that, big round of applause for Herman Rosati. Thank you.